Yes, good morning. <coughs> Today we'll discuss uh, on printer. Why printer? What printer? How printers are being used in <coughs> SAP? Whatever document you created, whatever things you have done for the whole day, at the end of the day, we need a printout for that. So print is printer is a played a vital role in SAP. Without printer, <coughs> we can't process any document. If you want to send anything to the uh, assignee of client, a customer, vendor, we need a printer. So today we're going to discuss about the printer, how printer plays a vital role in SAP and how a basis consultant has to configure printer. Okay, the, the way the way when the document are created may be completely different, but the output on paper is always performed using same mechanism. When you type something, you just type it on screen, but when you take an output, you will get the same output on the paper. Here, anywhere you go, for all databases, all you work with any ERP, anything, it requires three steps. In the CP, it requires three steps to print printers. Like it requires a, it prefers a spool request. Then it creates a output request. What is spool request? In spool request, it will show who, the admin of the admin of the document name name of the person IP address of the person and on from which system is logged in and everything stores in the spool request okay and uh, see spool request contain divine word print data includes administrative information and only when spoon request are coming to output device when uh, what will see output request output request will see what are going to print the actual data which are going to print that will come under this uh, output request and in output request what it does device independent print data from spool request convert to the print language like the data which you want to print the printer converts in its own language and print it for you okay here if user wants to create a spool request and an output request at the same time so he has to choose print immediately option I'll show you where is the option print immediately. When you create user, if you remember, when we create users, at that time we have an option, printer option. There are two tabs, print immediately and delete spool request. If you choose print immediately, it will automatically create a spool request and the output request, both it will create on this fly, okay? Actual document convert, the actual document content, like the, da the data, like 1KB, 2KB, 3KB, is stored in a temporarily sequential object. It's called Tamsay. Tamsay is a thing where your all spool data, which like uh, in an organization, if uh, 2,000 people are working, everybody taking a printout, like five printout, 10 pieces a day. So it becomes a huge data at the end of the day. Like Tamsay having a very limited data, uh, limited space in Tamsay. So we need to see that key. We clear thumbs say objects regularly and we need to create a spool request spool things also on regular way otherwise your system will be down in no time all this when happen all this happened in the at the night time all this happened at the night time we you should we have to schedule some jobs by which it clears all your spool requests every day morning it convert into zero again you start working and uh, Till evening, uh, some 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 companies keep backup for two days, some companies backup for three days, and some company has no no time to keep backup. But they don't have space because if you have five six thousand users, so everybody is taking printouts. Like somebody takes ten printout, somebody taking five printouts. So it's very hard to save all those data at that time. What do you need to do? You need to delete everything on the time only we have the options i'll show you the options where to go and which option to choose okay we can define storage location with thumbs objects it means what the data which is creating a 1kb 2k where you need to save okay there is a parameter there's a parameter rspo store location rspo slash 200 location what it does the default parameter value is g If you want to store that value, or if you want to store all your data in file system, so you have to use capital G, or if you want to save in database, you have to use this letter DB. So what happens if you save in DB, whenever you take backup, this data also gets backed up. Whenever you take, whenever you take backups, 
this also will get packed up and uh, when you when you want to retrieve something after two three days also you can retrieve from that database but what happened here if you keep in database all your pull request output request to the it will start giving performance issue because every hour the data is increasing every minute every hour data is increasing it may cause us to have performance issue but if you give it file system nothing happens the spool requests are stored in database table tst03 spool all spool requests are stored data in and uh, we have a, a table called tst03 where all your spool request data will automatically stored so you need to remember all these table names and everything okay So we can specify store allocation for output device using transaction code SPAD. Now we are going to use today two transaction code. Main transaction code is SPAD to create these spools and everything. We need to add transaction code SPAD. We will see how to see SPAD. What is the C command? C command is the first command. You want to perform after install immediately after installation okay so it will show whether your installation is perfect or not okay it has to show okay everything is fine okay this is the very first step to do your after installation and why use spro spro is for customizing things now you see in printer we have a local printing we have a network printing we will see how to do local printing today the spool processes at ol spool running the same host name In if you go to SM50, there you see spool processes. If you go to SM50, there you can see a spool work process by naming S. You can increase or decrease the spool numbers depending upon the hardware, depending on the number of users. In I have seen many organizations, they keep eight to ten spool requests in big organization. Like I'm talking about uh, my clients, they keep 8 to 10 spool request 150 dialog processes 40 background processes because they have got huge hardware they have got huge hardware excel with the local printing unix l and windows c local printer is the most fastest and most reliable connection from SAP to OS, you can configure multiple spool processes for a SAP instance. See, you can configure multiple spool processes. It's, there is no restriction. You have to give two or three only. It's all depending upon your hardware. It's all depending upon your user request. If you send mail to SAP asking key, we have this many users, or you could search on Google also. You will find many people are using uh, what, how many numbers of spool requests. Depending on that, you can configure. Okay, initially, when you install, it will give you only one. When you install system, by default, it will give you only one spool request. Now see how to create output device. What is output device? Output device is printer name. We need to use transaction code SPAD. SP is a transaction code to work with the spool devices. First you have to install and create a device. Configure the device. Then you can assign to any user, okay? Like if you're working in a big building, you sit in a seventh floor, and you have to assign printer to the all of your flows like people are working you don't need to go anyway by sitting at your place only you can configure printer to all their user ids like whenever you create user id you have to assign this so front-end printing over there then it will start automatically printing the things okay we'll see how to do in configuration part see when you can when you create output device it's very important the name is case sensitive 
and the maximum characters we can use is 30 characters but the device name printer name which are going to give is having only maximum 30 characters you're going to want to use more than 30 characters less than 30 no problem okay and you have to perform a short name also with three to four digit three to four letters you can give a short name also so device step whenever you give printers so we have to use device step s win uh, use for front end printing and spool server when you use spool server you have to give your application server name okay you have to prefer, prefer i'll show you uh, in our case, win test service or application server, we will provide the same name. Uh, win test server, I think. I'll show you. Uh, well, configuration lock printer in SAP system. If you want to lock your printer, you can lock your printer also sometimes we need to lock our printers to stop printing and all we can do this okay i'll show you how to lock printers also and device types device type the device type means uh, uh, on which type of device you would like to print and page formats, these are the default formats used by SAP itself, okay? If you're using a check printing, at that time you have to specify special page format, otherwise normal page format will do. Check means you have to take a size of a check, depending upon that you have to uh, define the page and give it to the printers. You can, we have to specify special, uh, special, uh, special printing for check printing special type of uh, page for check printing you have to use the device only you can create as many devices you want and the transaction which you're going to work today is sp01 sp02 sp12 and spad so we'll see how to create a printer today now to work with sp1 sp02 and sp10 all this we're going to see one by one now we'll see how to delete a printer also if you don't want printer how to delete printer we'll show you how to delete printer also in today's session only because sometimes what happen companies are getting they're taking a new printer and they just want to demolish or dec decommission the old printers at that time you just delete printer for viewer system also and how to delete old spool locks what is this old spool lock this is the spool locks which you need to delete every day for not deleting this old spool locks then your system will be go down if it gets full it has to have the old spool have uh, i have to set a uh, date range like in how many days you want one day two day three day Like if I give two, what happened? It keep it delete all data older than two. If I keep three, it keep all data greater than three. Okay. If I keep one, so somebody keeps zero, somebody keeps one, somebody keeps two. It's all depending upon their requirement. Okay. So maximum you can give one to ten. The numbers range you can give to one to ten. You can use one also, you can use 10 also, but it's all depending upon the client, okay? See, we have one job called SAP Reox Pool. We have one job called SAP Reox Pool, which delete all spool requests every day and QQ Q, every day morning free. This is job you have to schedule. This is a standard job which you need to schedule, which runs every day and night and delete all your spool requests. Okay, the, my, the age which you set there, it will run this job every day and night and delete all your spool requests and every day morning, it 
uh, turn up to the zero. If this job doesn't run for a day, you will be in big trouble. See, we have a uh, user job names, okay? Uh, RSPO 10041 and RSPO 10043. These <coughs> are work for clear Thompson records and clear our old spool request. See here, how many days you can keep here one or 10. You can keep one or 10 over here to delete a spool request. And we have transaction code Thumbs administration. Thumbs means what? It stores the documents, pool documents there. You have to clear this Thumbs every now and then. You have to clear this Thumbs every now and then to keep your printer working properly. That is the reason why you have to use transaction code. SP12 is the T code to work with the Thumbs objects. Okay, we'll see this also. They will give everything. And this is the storage location. This is the location where we need to use. Here you can use uh, DB also or G also. The parameter value is nil over here. We can use G also or you can use DB also. Okay. D stands for database, G stands for file system. C. One is DB, two is G stores in file system, and DB stored at database level. See here, when you create a user, here you have to go uh, create user and output immediately. You have to set this p is my device name. p is what? It's my device name. Here you can give output immediately means it will create pull request and output request both at the same time. Okay, if I select this also delete after output, what it does? It will delete once your print, print is over. So in this case, what happened? If you want to take a reprint, a reprint of same document, you are not able to take it again. Create a spool request, then you can able to take a printout. Okay, that is why companies keep retention period minimum one day. If at all this is a twenty-page printout, you take it, you take it, and you keep this stick also on. So what it does, it will delete your request, all spool request at the time only. Again, you have to create spool and all. So if you keep retention period one day, if you want to take the same printout. At the end of the day, also you can take same printout. Okay. And we have one more uh, thing called S SPO num SPO num. So what it does? This is this is to work with your spool number range. This is to work with your spool number range. Means by default, our spool requests are stop at thirty-two thousand. Spool request will stop at 32,000. If you want to increase those numbers to 2 billion, at that time you have to use this transaction code SP1 num. So we'll see one by one. Now we'll jump on the system and we'll start working on the system, okay?
Ajinder, Minal, yes. can I ask you a doubt? Yeah, yeah. Uh, see, you said that uh, our when we we need to create uh, device output, output immediately when while we creating user. Uh, okay. Uh huh. Yeah. If we want to print out, if we want to take a print out. We need uh -huh. to check that box while we are creating user. Yes, yeah. Yeah, sometimes uh, say uh, it is not required every time we need to take a printout, no? User. No, sir. No, no, not like that. But, sir, but uh, not like that. Actually, what happened? You are the user, Mr. X. I am creating yeah. a user ID, okay? I am going yeah. to user ID who sits in a remote location, like you sit somewhere in Dubai and working for us. Okay, no problem. Yeah. Okay. When I create uh, when I create a user Partha or XYZ mm -hmm. any name and I create one output device from our XYZ company and I assign printer to you. Okay. I yeah. just assign printer to you. You create okay. hundred documents per day, but you take printout of two documents only. Oh uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. When you take printout, then only it will activate. It will not print everything. If you write ABC, it will not go to print. There okay, is a separate okay. thing. When you start printing, okay, when you start printing, print and recognize ki ha, you have the device, we can print. If I won't put that print immediately, you are not yeah. able to take printout, you start calling basis, I am not able to do a printout, please help me out. So at that time also, oh. we need to, we need to select your, we just assign your printer to you. Whether you want to take printout, not really, it's up to you. See, we okay, have thousand okay. users. We have thousand users. We have to assign printer to all thousand users. But only 300 users are working every day and take printer. 700 people use printer once in a seven days, once in a month, once in a month, yeah. and depending upon. But mm -hmm. if they don't have printer, they will start shouting, "We don't have printer." But what's our duty? We are getting a list of users to whom we need to assign a printer. We just take oh. that list and assign printer to everybody in the organization. That is our duty. Okay. Oh, okay. That's okay. Good. SP AD is a transition code to create a spool print the output device. Okay. If I click on display here, it will show all my output devices. See, these all are output devices which we're having. Okay, just click on change and click on create. Here it will create a new output device. So you can specify 30 letters for this. That is my your name, and you can assign short name. You can assign short name over here. Okay. Now what you want to do? Here you want to select a device, SAP win. You have to take SAP win. Take SAP win over here, and the first pool servers. You have to give our server name win test SRV is a spool server. So it's a standard printer. We have to use standard printer only. And one more thing you have to keep in mind in this access method. Okay, in this access method, you need to do something. Okay. And keep remember that. Go to host printer. Okay. Here you have to double underscore and you have to write default. Okay. So what it does, if we put double underscore and default, what it does, whenever a printer, user try to use printer from his location, okay, 
his location, this two double underscore works uh, and make that SAP printer as his local printer. Because you configure one device only and you assign 2000 users. So for the his user only if printer drivers are installed in his system or laptop or desktop, then this, uh, after assigning this double underscore default, this printer will work as a local printer for everybody. So whenever he takes printout, he will get printouts immediately. Okay, you have to just remember no single score double underscore default. Okay, and output attributes remain same always. Nothing to be done here, and nothing to be done here also. So now what we have to do? We have to just save this document. We have to save this printer. Now what it shows printer is created. Here we'll take front end printing and again I have to save. Yeah, output device test print XYZ Limited was saved. Now, what I'll do when I create a user, I'll just take one user over here. Any user, take test user, change test user, defaults, printer. If I select printers, it will show me the output devices, all output devices. See, this is my output device. If I give print immediately, now what? Did user user test from wherever he works. Whenever it want to take printout, he can able to take printout. If I give this device to him and print, if I give device, and if I untick and check this for him, he will not able to take printout. Okay. If I give if I ex give the device and print immediately, then when he create a document, it will create a spool request also and output request also. After that, he can able to take the printout of that documents. Okay. I'm saving this here. We have to use transaction code SP. SP01. It's a spool request selection. has got no spools it has got no spools try to create one double request See, it create one spool request number sent to SAP. This number it is sent. I'll create one more request. Okay, just remember the number. Number is eight eight zero one. Just go to print. Just go to print. And print. I print from here. Okay, select device on which device you want this print. It will create 8802. Two spool requests we have now. 
now go to sp01 it has two numbers it has two numbers now if i click on spool number okay click on spool number to see some set attributes what it saves where it saves see it saves in database it saves in database size is 2 kb size is 2 kb sometimes what happen your printer is working very slow your cp system is working very slow why sometimes people are taking long printouts like 5 gb 10 gb if you see any of this sometimes if your system is not working fine go and check this object over here if it shows 5 gb data 10 gb data in one spool request you just immediately call the user and tell key please stop your printing if you want to take print out you can take in the night time because here people are working and because of your process system get hampered he will co definitely coordinate with you okay whenever people start shouting his system is not working well no problem there is issue performance you know to check this point also here okay, whether um, any bytes are filling bytes are filling for spool request if you see any longer thing a bigger value just inform the user okay in terms of attributes i will see sp02 To show you the output request. These are the output requests when we can, where you can take print out. Those are the spool requests, and these are the output requests. Okay. If you print something of two three pages, they will show you logs. Here nothing is printed. There is no logs to show you here. No records are there. If I run one report, I'll show you. I'll running one report and show it to you how you're going to see the things. I'll open job SM36. Delete old spool. Okay. Start condition. I'm going immediate. Check and save. Now, look to step. You have to define this job RSP0043. Okay. Check and save. It shows. Job and we schedule. We go back. Save it will show. See. Job saved with status released. Now go to SM37. See, it's finished. It shows finished and it created a spool also. It a spool also. Now you go and check your spool server. What it shows here.
see this is what a sprint this is my output print the job which i run this is the output for my job okay it creates pull request over here the output request show if you print you will get this print out okay now we work with sp12 is a some set administration if you select objects like this all objects all objects will be get deleted or if you play delete all it will delete all in one time okay if i delete if i press on delete it will delete the object this is the memory allocation okay in database how much and in uh, files to how much total 56 mb it uses total 56 mb utilize because it's a small system but if you go to uh, big companies like big clients you can be can able to see here uh, more data over here okay so how many clients you have we have one client called 001 one client is 800 we have So in data, uh, how many bytes of data you have here? In database this much bytes, and file this much bytes you have, and job log or pool logs for zero zero client. And how many clients are working with? For every user, every system, every client, it create job log and pool log for all systems. Okay. Now you see spread. here we have seen everything now we will see the full administration see here we will see the administration part here we have one thing called delete old spool request consistent check of spool database this is what we have done now if i click on this it will take to again with thumb say okay this is my delete old spool request and this is a print request overview we'll see one by one delete old spools what it is if i keep three over here it will create three days data and delete everything if i keep one year it will keep one day data and delete everything if i keep zero over here it will delete everything that thing will be left every day morning in the night it deletes everything it's all depending upon your uh, company policy okay you have to configure this only once only see delete all spool request uh, program name is RSP was zero zero four one, and four three is for constant check. Four one is for delete to old spool request. Now go back and see this print request over you. Here, what it shows? It shows all users are working with you. All users, like see, if I go to user, here you have only one user. But if you go to live servers, you can able to see three hundred, four hundred users over here. that everything should be finished over here if see something cancel you have to work on that if you see anything cancel just click on that see why it got cancelled cancel number should be always zero okay you will get able to see each day how many print outs are done it will show you the all numbers for particular day but from particular time to time and it show the in clients also Which client? Zero zero one client, zero zero two client, zero zero three client. Any client you take, it will show you the uh, client numbers also. If you 
if i click on this it will take me to sp12 40 spool requests are checked tsp is okay so the spool constraints check now one more thing is left This is the this is the transaction code SNM to work with the objects. Here you have to specify the intervals from which numbers to which number you want. Okay, here you can define numbers to 2 billion. For example, if I make it 50,000, okay now your print will start from 100 and 100 to 50000 without stopping in it will change numbers 100 101 100 203 104 till 50000 it creates but then we can create value till 2 billion the default value of printer is 32000 only but you can increase till 2000 save this It's been changes were saved. Guess what? Now you increase the value from 100 to 39,000 to 50,000. You have the number range till 2 billions. It's an interview question. Okay, what is the default value? 32,000. Till what extent we extend? We can extend till 2 billion. These are the two values. These are the two things you need to remember while working with the printers. Okay. No, uh, why is this numbers? Numbers means uh, your number is print number one, my number is two, somebody is three, there's a number. They, we should know how many printouts you are taking. No, this number uh, that, is we need to start with zero, zero now. Why is 100? That, that's what I'm doing. No, see what happened uh, in SAP for material master, for vendor master, for FI things. There is fixed value. Somebody start from 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 is already assigned to somebody, somebody, some other transaction. That is the reason why they use 100, 200, 300, 10,001. But that, that is the first number which I'm going to take. If 0, 0, 1 is already assigned to material master, then when you mm. work with material master, it will take 100 and 102. When you work with printer, it will start from 100, 100 and 102. And if you, 100 is also used, then we start thousand and thousand one, ten thousand one to one lakh, like ten thousand one. Like we need to specify a number, a starting okay. number. <laughs> it may be zero zero one also, hundred also, ten thousand one also, one lakh one also. It's up to you. There is no problem. But depending okay. upon that, it will start counting and taking new numbers till it reaches the last number. When it reaches the last number, it tells key maximum limit is reached. Okay. Previously, uh, SAP given only 32,000 number, 32,000 only, but you can extend this till to the 2 billion. Yeah. Okay. And it, oh, if you go for interview for three years experience, two, three years experience, they will definitely ask you what are your questions in printers. 